the Central Bank of Nigeria has ordered all banks and financial institutions to transfer funds from dormant accounts to the Apex Bank. This applies to accounts that have been inactive for 10 years or more. The move aims to reunite dormant accounts or dormant, uh, dormant uh, funds with their rightful owners, standardize the management of such accounts, and establish a procedure for reclaiming warehoused funds. Eligible accounts include current account, savings and terms deposits, domiciliary accounts, and prepaid card accounts. Government-owned accounts, unclaimed salaries, and funds from unclaimed financial instruments are also included. However, accounts under investigation, litigation, or encumbered by collateral or lease are exempt. And so to further discuss this, I'm joined by Mukhtar Mohammed. He's a financial market analyst, and he joins me live via video chat. Mukhtar, I appreciate you for doing this with us. Uh, we're pressed for time, so let's get started. What was your initial reaction to the CBN directive on, on Doma's account? I mean, there's been rumors about this for a very long time. I think it circulates every year, but seeing this is quite interesting. But how do you think it will impact the, the, the financial market? But first, your reaction. Well, I, just like you said, it has been, it's been around us for a while. It's not a new law. It came in 2015, uh, but maybe uh, every year it keeps coming and maybe the bank has a way that they were able to sort it out without its implementation. But I think the present uh, CBM management team is looking like they really want to implement the policies. Um, it, it, I mean, it's not a new policy, like I said, and how its impact on the financial market. It depends. It could be very positive uh, because some of these uh, um, dominant accounts have just been there and then helping uh, bank in terms of liquidity and they don't earn any interest on them. You know, um, but again, you, you don't earn any interest on a dominant account. But I like that the CBN have differentiated a lot of uh, accounts that might not be affected. You know, like liquidation, like they said, also, and also uh, maybe estate accounts that the processes are still in. And they, the time frame, those accounts that will be affected is not one year or two years. It account has been dormant for a year or two is account has been dormant for us from, us from 10 years. So that definitely shows that there are issues behind this account for the account to be dominant for 10 years. And again, you know, that means some of those accounts really do not have a BVA. And so they have, they have, they've really not been operational. They've really been dominant. So I, I think uh, it's a good policy. Its impact in the financial sector will all depends on uh, which bank has a high I don't account, but for now we don't know. But if you look at it very well, uh, what has really been happening before is that the Fed, the first generation bank, uh, tend to be the ones with those high demand accounts of people. Maybe they didn't have a will. They have, they, the family is not able to trust the account, or they don't even know that there's an account there. So I, 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 I think those are the ones that will be maybe they will be affected more. But you know, Nigerians yeah. always thought that. Um, what the CBN is trying to do is to get those um, money back into the system so that the government can borrow. <laughs> so that is what everybody is saying. Uh, they have come again yeah. to use our money. Yeah, Mukhtar, I'm really glad you're talking about, you know, uh, the directive and how it will affect uh, the average Nigerian banking uh, customer. Because some persons might be watching it, watching and be asking themselves, what exactly is a dormant account? And what, you know, what qualifies for a dormant account? And how can they remain active uh, so that they cannot be affected uh, by this policy? As you answer that question, I would, because I would, you've answered a bit of that question, but more, I would like to speak on the potential draw uh, the potential drawbacks and even the benefits of this policy uh, in the long term in terms of how it will affect the overall stability of the Nigerian financial system? Well, for the drawback, it has to do, like I said, um, if most banks uh, have been using those accounts as to push their liquidity standard, that means their liquidity ratio will, ha will, will be down a little. Um, depending on the amount in those banks. So that could be a drawback. But we won't know all that until we get the financial report. And so we don't know the percentage of uh, of these accounts in the bank, but I don't think they should be. Um, they, they may not be up to a very large percentage to cost any financial destruction to the banks. That's what I, I personally fear, because um, ordinarily those dormant accounts have been there. Like I said, um, 
Uh, those are the ones that have been there for 10 years. Uh, back to your question, uh, for most Nigerians to make sure that their accounts are not dormant, uh, you, you, you need to operate that account at, at least once in six months. Once there's no transaction on the account after six months, that account becomes dormant. And so whenever you go there, you may need to reactivate it again for you to be able to, uh, to, to, to do any transaction on those accounts. So that is one. But in this case now, the, even if your account has been dormant for six years, for five years, for eight years, for nine years, it will not be affected. But from 10 years, um, it will be, be affected. Like the positivity on it is that um, a, a lot of people might just have to uh, get the account, re, re, reactivate some of this account, because some of these individuals might still be available, but maybe they've changed their address, they're not using their account again, they've, uh, maybe they have issues, maybe the Nigerians in diaspora, um, they've not come back, so they've not done their BVN, so they've not done any transaction on those accounts. I think the bank would definitely want to, the bank would not just surrender those accounts like that. They would try to um, look at uh, the addresses there and try to reach those people. And, uh, but the CBN have also said that for those accounts to be uh, revalidated, it, is, it still has to come through them. So when you see CBN saying things like that, that means there are a lot of issues behind the Thurman account that maybe the banks have been involved in one infringement or the others because ordinarily I go into the bank, I, 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 I present um, back my, because for, for you to reactivate your Thurman account, you might have to bring your, your utility bill that is where you, you currently stay, means of identification and uh, before those accounts will be reactivated and those policies are still there. Like I said, it's not new. It's, it's so that yeah. we should say... Oh, I, 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 and it, it makes you wonder about those that have accounts that have been lying there for, I don't know, 20, 15 years, 40 years, and their case still, case still lies in court when it comes to next of kin issues and uh, those that are in lieu of, uh, of wills to pass on to their benefactors. But let's move away from that now and talk about, you know, this as it pertains to financial institutions in Nigeria. For this to be implemented, what would then be an adjustment for the for this financial institution? What do you think they would be doing, or what would they need to do to comply with this new direct uh, new uh, regulations and directive? Well, they don't they don't have an option. It's your regulator that's telling you to comply, so you just have to comply because there's always a penalty if you don't comply. Uh, for the banks, the CBN also know some of those accounts because they are also the custodian of some of these accounts. So I don't think it will be a problem for the bank to, to comply. It's not a rocket science thing that they have. But I said, like I said, some of the banks might just have to try one way or the other to reach out to most owners of those accounts if they can reach them and, and, and see if you can reactivate those accounts and make it active. And, but you know that also depends on the level of transaction that has happened in those accounts. You know, before the advent of BVM, people just open account to do one transaction or the other. After that, they, they leave that account. And sometimes, again, this dominant account has also been used for criminal activities. Uh, you've had where people passed on their account were used for, for movement of other people falling into those account through inside that dealing within the banking space. I think, again, that also, the positive about that is that it will help um, reduce such uh, um, such things that are happening in, in, in the bank when some of this account will be reactivated inside in, in, inside the bank, then fund transfer to those accounts, then move for, for criminal purposes. And I think that also we reduce that or totally eliminate it. So there's the positivity there also for that for customers. For the bank, I think the positivity is that the, you you may have to reach out for them, those that have those accounts, or also, you, you, you may begin to, 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 to look at your balance sheet and begin to re-strategize if most of your liquidity is driven by dormant account. But I, like I said, I don't think the percentage will be much of those uh, accounts that are really dormant, that are really, um, that will really affect the liquidity of the All right. Bank. All right. Well, Mokhtar, I appreciate you for doing this with us. Thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. Thank you.